All right, so today we are going to be making a very easy transition animation that we can use in order to transition to another shot. So this is going to be a very simple one. It's also going to be a very short one. Now, we have got our empty right over here, which is moving our camera around and I've already brought it into the scene. Now, we don't need anything else in this scene besides this iPhone. And actually there's going to be two, but first let's do one. So I'm going to press on one in order to make sure that we can place our camera in the correct position. So control alt zero and our camera is now right over here. In this case, I do want to be using 80 millimeters. So I'm going to set it to 80 millimeters, G and Z, G, Z, Z. And basically what we want to have happen is that the iPhone is covering the entire screen. So G, Z, Z, and something like this should probably do the trick because now uh, everything in the screen is covered, which means that we can hide our cut and have it open up from the middle. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. I'm first going to take this empty RZ 90 degrees because I want it to land right over there. So I'm going to press I on frame 10 because this is the place where it's going to be landing. Now I'm going to set it to frame one, G and Z, bring it upwards all the way over here, press I, and now it is falling on the ground. And that's exactly what we want. Now, naturally, we do want to move this to the side so that we can actually use this animation to reveal whatever is behind this area. And I'm going to make it in such a fashion so that it's only approximately 30 frames. So I'm going to press on G and X and move this to the side. But I also want to rotate this. So I'm going to press R and Z and I'm going to move this something like so. G and X, make sure that it's outside of the screen. Press I and actually set this on frame 35 because we're going to have it move along a bit faster. So let's see what it looks like coming down moving to the side. Still not a very professional animation, but it doesn't matter for now because all we have to do is simply duplicate this entire iPhone. Let's take this, Shift D, Y, bring it right over there. And on frame 10, this should be in existence. So I'm going to select the second empty and this is correct. It doesn't have to follow all the other animations. So I'm simply going to delete this keyframe and on frame 10, G and Y, I'm going to bring it backwards, press I and make sure that it's right over there. Then on frame nine, we actually don't want this to exist. So I'm going to press S and zero and now it doesn't exist, press I. And basically it comes into existence and it's following the same animation as the other one, but we don't want that to happen. We actually want it to move to the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at our empty right over here in the object properties. And I can see that the location on the X is four point something. So I'm going to set it to minus four point something, press I, and we have to do that exactly on this frame. Now it's moving towards this side, but perhaps we want to change the rotation of this as well. So I'm going to select this and I'm actually going to rotate it to the other side, something like this. Let's see what it looks like. And it's not enough because it's not rotating enough. I'm simply going to rotate it like this. So let's see what that looks like. And now we've got a pretty cool looking animation. Let's see what it looks like. Bam, and it's moving outside of the frame. Now, all we have to do is make sure that it looks a bit more professional. So I'm heading over into the graph editor. You can either do that by clicking over here and going to graph editor, or you can press control tab in order to move around. So there's basically only two values that we used. We use the X value on the location, and we also use the Z value for the rotation. Now, the first thing we need to do is change the Z location because that's the first one that's going to be occurring. So A and dot, and make sure that we're in the correct empty as well. So only in the empty one do we have a C location and we're going to do that first. Now this one should not change, but we can change this one. I'm going to bring it down because it needs to come in a whole lot faster. There you go. Now let's go to the X location, open it up, A and dot, and we have to make these handles free. So I'm going to right mouse click, handle type free. And now we can move those separately from each other. So I'm going to take this one, bring it upwards. And as you can see, it is moving a bit too quickly. So I'm going to take this and I'm also going to take this and bring it down. Why am I going to do that? Because now it's going to take a small break right over there. And that looks pretty cool. But the rotation now is off. So we have to close this one, go to the Z unit rotation. Let's open it up and let's make sure that right over here, it's already a bit faster. So G and Y, uh, of course, make these free as well. Handle type free, G and Y, bring this down and now it is going to be rotating a little bit faster. I'm going to take this one, G and X, move it to the side. Now it's already reaching its final rotation right over here. I don't want that to happen. So I'm simply going to drag this out some more. So now we've got this smooth looking animation simply by bringing this upwards and it's going down very fast. It's taking a little bit of a break down here because it's less of an angle. So it's a bit slower and then it's coming to a halt right over there. And that looks pretty good, but I do think it's a bit too slow. So if I open up the X location, let's have a look at this one. 
I'm going to bring this to the side because I want this to be done a whole lot quicker. It should only be like a second. Now let's do the same for the Z rotation and let's bring it towards this side. Take this line and let's see what it looks like. There you go. And I do believe that we can change the X location again. Something like this should probably do the trick. So it's moving outwards pretty quickly, but within one second, we are done. There you go. Now we should do the same for the other one. So let's open up the X location, A and dot, and actually on frame 26, this should be done. So I'm going to move this keyframe right over there. I'm going to bring this upwards and it should be faster right over here. So let's move those handles. And maybe it's a bit too quick, so I'm going to simply bring it over there. You can see that it's not being finished already because the rotation is not done here. So I'm going into the Z Euler rotation. Let's open that up right over there and make sure that the rotation is also going to be finished a lot quicker by taking this handle GX and moving it towards this side. And on frame 26, it should be moved outside of the frame. So something like this should probably do the trick. There you go. So let's see what we got. It's coming down, moving outside of each other. Whoop, chop. Very good. And that's the way to make a transition animation. The way that we're going to be using this is by adding it to another render and opening it up, showing a different render behind that one. And that's all you need to do. Of course, you can be creative with this in another way. You can also have a telephone drop from the, from the sky, for example, and have it wipe over. You can also have it come from the right to the left. And then you can also mask this out and make sure that there's a different render revealed behind it. But this is the basis of that animation. And I hope this was clear to you. We are going to be using this as a transition. But in the next video, we are going to make a different cinematic type animation. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please click on subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. I get the money and it's right on cue. Keep the duffel bag up inside my coop. Hold a couple racks, tell them I love you. You want to be a boss, do it like I do. Uh.